Welcome back to more adventures with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. This is Stu Jones as we take flight here from Pompano Beach, Florida, celebrating 26 years with the club. And it's also now 24 years for the annual Miami Boat Show Poker Run, which has been kind of an iconic event in February every year on the heels of the Miami International Boat Show, uh, which also has had a lot of changes more recently. But we're now joining our helicopter video crew from Florida Coast to Coast Helicopters as we rendezvous here at Hullover Marine Center, uh, just near the Hullover Inlet for the Thursday departure of this 24-year running event. 24 years, can you believe it? And you know, it started right here uh, nearby Hullover Marine Center from Sunny Isles Marina back in the 90s. Uh, not far from where we're at now is what, where the club had its roots uh, here in North Miami. So let's just backtrack about five or ten minutes earlier as our lovely FPC girl Marissa handed off the poker cards uh, right off the dock here at Hallover Marine Center. Well, there's no uh, doubt that we've got some heavy-duty hardware here on this run. Mark Stoddart from Canada with his brand-new MTI-48 uh, 1350, 1550s. It was a showboat at the MTI booth, and his previous boat here, uh, David Branton and James Branton, his son. Uh, so really kind of cool for Mark Stoddart to see his last boat and his new boat running, and they're going to be running side-by-side -side all the way down to Key Largo today. And keeping our Canadian entry list strong, Michael Caravetta, a longtime member of the club. Now he's got himself a nice 46-foot cigarette. And Dale Razor, all the way from California, now the proud owner of this very, very famous 46 skater team, Freedom US1. Nice to see another Black Thunder on the roster for this event. Uh, Alex Tumbelis from New York, his first event with the Florida Powerboat Club. And he's got his friend David at the helm today. And let's welcome back longtime member Doug Falcone in his 42-foot Mystic. He celebrated the uh, first run with this club back in the Key West event in November. And this is poker run number two here down in South Florida. Todd and Karen Whitman used to have an Intrepid, but they wanted to go a little faster. So now they're in this 38-foot cigarette Top Gun. And let's welcome back Jesse and Stephanie Newman. Uh, they did their last event, Key West, in a 39 Nortec. And proud of this brand new 450 with Quad Mercury Racing Verado 400s. And celebrating about a year of ownership of this new 42 MTI, Tommy Toto moved from a big outer limits uh, to the center console MTI and he's been enjoying it ever since. Okay, gang. Good. We're Let's down. say hi to David Landsman and his crew from Maryland. Uh, we never know what they're gonna bring because he owns so many boats, but this is a 44 Mystic Cat with Mercury Racing 700s. And as we close in, you can really see that we have quite an eclectic mix of boats and certainly a lot of manufacturers and dealers represented here on the sponsor masthead because this event historically was the manufacturer's offshore rally, which gave uh, all of the boat show exhibitors a chance to get their boats out on the water right after the Miami Boat Show and try to get them sold. And uh, what better way than to get them out on the water and take your prospective buyers down to the Florida Keys. So. That may not be the case for everybody here. A lot of these uh, members are just power boating enthusiasts who came down to be a part of this run in the middle of February where it's uh, cold and snowy everywhere else in the country. Uh, but remember, the boat show just finished. So a lot of the manufacturers were just dying to get out of that boat show and get their boats in the water and be headed to the Florida Keys. So this is what this event represents to really many of us year after year. 
And to guys like this, uh, Michael Caravetta, you know, he's from Canada, so <laughs> he doesn't want to be in Canada right now. He wants to be down here having fun with all you guys uh, heading down to the Florida Keys. Lots of help from our good friends here at Hallover Marine Center. Look off in the distance. You can see that's the brand new Project 1080. While new to me, uh, a 20-year-old cigarette uh, sponsored by Mercury Racing, a new resto mod that's getting its second tour of duty. We first launched the boat back on the Winter Poker Run a month earlier, uh, but I've got my special spot here right in front of the, uh, the barn doors where they are getting me prepped and cleaned up and ready to launch. And I know that this is uh, typically the kind of shot we would get from our drone, but you can hear that helicopter uh, whizzing away. We're closing in really tight here and just reminding everybody, guys, get off the dock, get out on the water. Sometimes we have to use the helicopter for not just taking pictures, but to remind everybody, hey, the, the timer is up, guys. <laughs> get out on the water and let's get rolling. Very, very special announcement here that the brand new 60-foot Midnight Express P. DeMar is making its way out onto the waterways. The boat was launched back at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show in the fall of 18. Uh, here we are now, Miami, uh, February 2019, and it's making its poker run debut. Uh, clearly a big, big move. Watch this boat and its development for the last two years at the Midnight Express factory in North Miami. Nice to see it on the water uh, and an owner that currently owns it but said that the guys could take it and use it for the poker run. So clearly gave me an opportunity to get my first ride. I was going to bring my Top Gun on the Thursday run, but when Eric Glazer told me that I could ride with them on this new 60, I said, you know what, I'm going to leave the cigarette back at Hallover Marine Center today, and I plan to jump on board with the Midnight Gang at Grove Harbor Marina after the second poker card. And kind of a special image here as you look down, for those of you who know the skaters, uh, the one in the center, Jimmy Lee in a team double take, 46 skater, off to the right, his previous boat, Freedom US-1, uh, which he sold recently. Uh, so kind of a cool shot here, guys, that uh, just brings back a lot of memories for many of us because look at that Freedom US-1. Let's face it, that boat has been on so many poker runs all over the country, not just Florida Powerboat Club events, but events all over the country and Jimmy has maintained her so well over the years. A big shout out to Miami Dade Fire Rescue who are on board and uh, on our safety management payroll for this event and for all Florida Powerboat Club events headed down to the Florida Keys. They do a great job of monitoring the safety of the event and responding to any incident. And it looks like we're going to get some a chopper time with the twin skaters, uh, Freedom US-1 on the right and Double Take on the left. And the reason that we are staying on the inside is because it is really blowing out in the ocean right now and really hard. It's February and, you know, the conditions now are not that pleasant when it's blowing hard out of the east. So the right decision to make was to stay on the inside. And there's really a nice route going along um, the beach side. Okay, so we are traveling along on the east side of the Intracoastal. You know, there's two routes going down from Hullover Inlet down to downtown Miami. And if you stay to port or stay to the east after you pass through the Broad Causeway at 125th Street, then you'll find a nice scenic ride with all these beautiful homes off in the distance. And there are some no-wake zones and some bridges to go through. But what a great backdrop for Freedom US-1 with Dale Razor and of course Jim Lee in the double take to be running together and uh, Jimmy Lee's got to be proud to look over to his right and see his old boat running alongside. If you really got up close and looked at that Freedom US-1, I think it's about as good as clean, as solid, and as perfect as it ever was uh, when Jimmy Lee owned it and maintained it so well. As for Double Take, well, she's in great shape too, uh, and I do believe that Jimmy does have plans to sell it in the future. By the time this video uh, was released, I believe it's long gone, 
Uh, and I know that Jim still is staying in the powerboat world. He's got a cigarette still. He's, of course, he's got that big Christina motor yacht. And he's still very active with the Florida Powerboat Club. But his days of owning these big cats, I think, are somewhat limited. He's owned so many of them before. And I think he's finally said, you know what, guys? It's time for you younger guys to have some fun. I just turned 60. And uh, I'm just going to chill back over. I'm still going to party a lot. But I don't need this big cat to keep me busy. When the sun goes down to the beating of your heart As the earth moves in orbit I will always be the one who stands my ground And I do want to remind everyone that uh, companies like Midnight Express have been very supportive of this event over the years and of the club in general. They are a series sponsor, as well as this boat. This is a Deep Impact, uh, also built in Miami, and their sister company, Blackwater. And we're going to see a lot of Nortex on this run, too, because they're also a sponsor of the club. So I want to mention that. And we'll get plenty of chances to see all of these sponsor boats and the new models that came out this year. Uh, throughout the course of this video and uh, many more to come. Uh, this is a very, very busy year, 2019, for the Florida Powerboat Club. And after we leave Miami, of course, we head for Tampa, then to Fort Myers. We squeezed in a very special manufacturer rendezvous for Midnight Express uh, by going over to Bimini in April. Uh, Orange Beach in May, uh, the Bahamas in the summertime in June, and then again, of course, the Emerald Coast Poker Run in August. So there's a lot going on with the club in 2019 and a lot of videos to come. And I know that this guy, Sal Olivia, is going to watch every single one of them because he's hardcore. <laughs> in fact, he's gone out and bought himself another boat, a cigarette center console. So he's got his high-performance 42X powered by Mercury Racing 700s and his more casual center console with uh, Verado outboards for cruising over to the Bahamas and for those more casual rides down to the Florida Keys. I'm sitting here in the studio watching all this aerial footage going through Miami and I can't help but remember back in the 80s the Miami Vice episodes where a lot of this uh, background was in those shows and of course even the earlier days in the 90s when we started the Florida Powerboat Club and spent a lot of time here uh, but uh, all of these sites and all these backgrounds are a big part of the history of our club in the 26 27 years we've been doing these events I can't tell you how many times I've passed through this <laughs> bridge at the Tuttle Causeway, but um, this, of course, is something that a lot of you probably haven't done because you normally will go out the inlet and travel offshore, or you might take the normal route down through the inside, but this is the better way to go if you're in a powerboat. Uh, it's more scenic, and you can stay on plane for quite a bit of the time. Now, eventually, we'll get to the Venetian causeways, and a decision has to be made. You're either going to go through the first one here, which is the East Venetian, which is a low bridge and uh, one that goes up about every half an hour. You can fit under the bridge uh, quite easily with a small boat, but a big center console has got to go down all the way uh, near Sea Isle and cross through the larger of the Venetian bridges. And all the performance boats were able to make it through the lower bridge and then cruise through these backwaters of the Port of Miami uh, near Fisher Island. And again, this is a part of that scenic backdrop that really makes it a cool ride heading down through Miami 
and uh, making that turn towards uh, Virginia Key and the Rickenbacker Causeway, uh, where a lot of the Miami Boat Show is still fully assembled, and uh, they're just starting to dismantle it at this time. Say hi to Canadian Mark Stoddard, all the way from Ontario. He's got a brand new 48 MTI, his second 48 MTI. And the funny thing happened was that the one he just sold happened to have turned up on this event. Uh, David uh, and James Branton bought that boat, and it's on the event too. So uh, his most current 48 and his previous 48 are going to be docked side by side uh, down in Key Largo. So that's kind of a cool addition uh, for those of you who love these MTI boats. We've got plenty of them on this run. For the true MTI enthusiasts, this 48 powered by Mercury Racing 1550s is truly one of the crowd pleasers. And here is that final bridge uh, as we cross through Rickenbacker Causeway, which I would say is the gateway to Biscayne Bay and pretty much open water running as we head down south through Biscayne Bay towards Key Largo. And of course, time for a quick shout out to Joe Balistrieri from Lighthouse Point. Uh, he's got his 33 Everglades and two of our Miami-Dade Fire Rescue uh, medics on board, safety divers. Uh, they're gonna be following the pack all the way down to Key Largo today and also on Friday. So. Thanks to our safety management team here for joining us. And we'll continue our introductions of our club members and special welcome to this new couple, Brian and Leslie Blount, all the way from Oregon, a long way from home, uh, but enjoying their ride on this brand new 2019 Wright Performance 360 Cat pair of Mercury Racing 400Rs. Um, it's their first poker run because they just took delivery of the boat from the Miami Boat Show from Performance Boat Center. And uh, I think Rusty's riding along with them today. Uh, but they said that they had a fantastic time. They reported in their video bio. Uh, it was good food, good destinations, good people, and a great event. So nice to have you guys, especially when we get you guys from the West Coast because, you know, we like to show off a little down here in Florida and show you guys just how much fun we have with our boating. Uh, they said they always wanted to boat to the Florida Keys, and the FPC members were great guides. Well, thanks to Brian and Leslie for joining us, and we hope to see you again with us soon. And here's another team that came a long way to join us, uh, Barry and Stephanie Henson from Tennessee. Uh, but maybe they didn't come that far because they've also got a condo in Fort Lauderdale. This is a 43 Nortec Cat powered by Big Teague 1100s, and I was surprised to see them here on this event because just earlier, about three weeks earlier on the winter poker run, they had a little mechanical problem. So whatever it was, I guess it wasn't that serious because even though the boat went home on a trailer, they're up and running within three weeks and they look like they're running just fine. And now a very special welcome to Alex Tembelis from New York and his 1998 43-foot Black Thunder SC pair of Mercury Racing 540s on board. Said he had a great time. Everything was organized and well-planned. And making our next stop now in Coconut Grove at Grove Harbor Marina, one of our marine partners here uh, for these events for, oh, I don't know, about a dozen years or more, I'm guessing. Uh, but they've always uh, rolled out the red carpet to us. Some of our club members actually stayed here overnight and used some area hotels like the Ritz-Carlton uh, to overnight here. And it works out really well because, you know, we can't stage the entire event out of one marina. Uh, so for the Key West run and for the Miami run and, some of the others that are heading to the Florida Keys. This works out really well. And the guys at Grove Harbor are really trained professionals when it comes to handing out the poker cards. They've got those long poles with the boxing mitts on the end uh, to fend the boats off so that they don't hit the dock. Uh, and we usually try to get a couple of our FPC girls on the dock to hand out the cards. So this is really just a part of the ceremony and the tradition that we like to enjoy with our poker run events. Uh, the poker card checkpoint gives us a chance to get some good dockside video and really you know have that up close experience with the crews as we get things kicked off here from miami so let's just uh let the cameras roll for a little bit here and give you guys uh, back at home that dockside experience as if you're standing right here at grove harbor handing the cards off yourself
Well, I got to say, guys, that was fun. I mean, to stand on the dock and be right up there and catching the you know spirited teams as they come through and grabbing the cards and seeing the girls in their bikinis and the guys with big eat, shit-eating grins on their faces, because <laughs> that's how I feel on every poker run. But, you know, that's the energy that we have uh, on these events, and it never gets old, you know, for that reason. So let's just catch a few more teams here as they... Uh, get their touch and go, we call it. Uh, pick up their second poker card as they head out now to Biscayne Bay. And let's talk about the run now because really just running down to Key Largo and, and that's it, you know, which makes this uh, one of the shortest or indeed the shortest poker run that we do on the FPC roster. And it's certainly not by choice that we have such a short run. We would like to go farther. We'd like to go down uh, to Isla Mirada or to the Middle Keys at the very least. And we have day trips planned during the weekend so we can get more boating in. So my lucky day now getting my first ride on board this P. DeMar 60-foot Midnight Express. Two years in the development. And uh, I'm sitting by myself way up here in the bunny seat. <laughs> but clearly not a bunny. Uh, trying to get some video as we... We're really going fast, by the way, right now. And not a jackass with his fingers in the camera. Jeez, I think that was me. Uh, but it was a great uh, opportunity to get on board and uh, ride on that Midnight Express. Now we got some rooster tails as we head south. The throttles go down, the rooster tails go up, and the fun is about to begin. And here we go with what I would consider to be the money shot, uh, both by video and by stills. Uh, nothing better than seeing two classic skaters, 46s, running side by side. I know Jimmy Lee is proud right now, sitting here at the wheel of his double take, looking over his shoulder at his former Freedom US 146, which he had probably spent about a thousand hours on that boat over the years. A world class, uh, you know, super boat from the back in the early 90s, uh, won the Super Boat World Championships. Uh, so, kind of neat to see these two side by side, uh, trimmed out, dialed in with a big rooster tail, and just having some fun. Guys, it doesn't get much better than this. This is why I love my job. I get to ride around with these guys on the poker runs and hang out with them for social time afterwards. But when it all is said and done, I get to sit here in the studio <laughs> and watch all the videos. So, wow. I mean, I don't know who that is running off in the distance in the background, but uh, these guys are the front runners, and this is why we have different classes in the club. We let the fast guys go first, uh, and that's exactly what they're doing, enjoying the triple-digit speeds here as they head south on Biscayne Bay.
Now we're catching up with Kim and Annalisa Collins uh, from the UK. They've got a home in Miami as well. And they've got two boats here in South Florida. They're going to run their Donzi ZR Comp today, 38-foot Donzi. They call it a comp because it's a competition model. Sit down with a smaller cockpit, a very well-balanced boat, staggered setup. They built most of these with Mercury Racing 525s, and the boat runs great with that power. I've always said uh, that this 38ZR Comp uh, captures the essence of what it is to own a Donzi. They've always been viewed, in, in my opinion, and many of us, as being a very stylish boat. And I think this 38 captures the true spirit of the iconic Donzi brand. Now we're catching up with David Landsman in his 44-foot Mystic, uh, powered by Mercury Racing 700s, a team called Breaking Balls. And... You know what? I don't. <laughs> I think it's a funny name, but it sounds like something I do a lot. I break balls all the time, and I'm going to do a little breaking now. David cracks me up because you never know what boat he's going to show up with. He's he's a car guy. You know, he he buys and sells cars, and he does the same thing with his boats. And the funniest thing that happened this year, just a couple months earlier, he took delivery of his brand new Midnight Express 43, and he was one of the lucky guys to get the new Mercury Racing 450Rs, five of them. And the boat went to Nashville for the uh, Mercury unveiling of that new 450. And at the time that he went to the unveiling, somebody from Canada offered him uh, some money, a very attractive offer on the boat, and he never got a chance to see the boat again. <laughs> it's tr it went straight from Nashville to Canada. And luckily, Jackie and I got to join him uh, on the Nashville run. We got to use the boat for one day, and it went bye-bye. And now we're getting some time with this... Uh, Brand new Wright Performance 360 Cat uh, from Performance Boat Center. Uh, they just had the boat showcased at the Miami International Boat Show. The new owners, Brian and Leslie Blount, all the way from Oregon. We introduced them just a little earlier in the show, uh, but now we get a chance to really see the boat all dialed in and running at speed across Biscayne Bay and doing a great job. I want to thank the Blounts for coming as far as they did. I'm glad that they got bit by the bug and um, obviously the popularity of these smaller cats with twin mercury 400 r's uh, is widespread you know all of the big manufacturers are going into similar models uh, from 32 up to about 36 feet in length i think that this is one that really holds a strong pedigree because the doug wright name is behind it and while doug wrights have always been built as typically racing style boats this takes it to the next level and brings it more into the poker run mainstream so 36 feet a huge cockpit uh, it comes well priced in the mid 400 range with a trailer, uh, all nice electronics, uh, Alcantara interior. I think it's great value and for somebody wanting to get into the sport, it's, a, it's certainly a good move uh, for a poker run friendly boat. Uh, so thanks again to Brian and Leslie Blount and thanks to Rusty Williams and his lovely gal Jessica for being on board to represent our sponsor, Performance Boat Center. And it may seem unusual to see Black Diamond Express out here all by itself uh, on Biscayne Bay. Uh, typically going to see Black Diamond Express alongside the mothership, uh, Team Black Diamond. And, of course, the new, new mothership, that 59 cigarette Tirana powered by six Mercury Racing 450s. And the good news is our next episode, we're going to feature all three running together. The 34, the 52, and the new 59 6 carat, along with dozens of other high performance power boats and teams from all over the country joining us here on this 2019 edition of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run. So, we're going to wrap it up right now. Thanks to our sponsors, including Mercury Racing, our presenting sponsor, and all of our featured manufacturing sponsors who help to support this event, as well as all the other poker runs on the Florida Powerboat Club roster throughout 2019. This is Stu Jones. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, remember to click that notification bell off to the right. That way you'll get all of the updates when new episodes come out. And we have plenty of new episodes, at least four, covering this incredible Miami Boat Show poker run, which returned to Key Largo. We're going to follow that up with the Tampa Bay poker run, Fort Myers, Orange Beach, and many more to come throughout 2019. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep it safe out there, and always remember to wear your life jackets.